for the freedoms that we have as we wake up. We don't have to worry about being kidnapped or taken away just for believing in you. And just being able to wake up with our families and maybe have breakfast and come to your house of worship and not being in fear. We are so thankful and blessed to live in this country and to have the freedoms we have. But we are thankful to those that gave their lives and sacrificed so much in their time and their families as well to keep that faith. So pray for them this morning. We pray for this service and all those that are partaking in this world. Let it be pleasing to your ears. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I have a seat. Now at this time, we have to walk for a special music.
with some of the new textbooks coming out, some of the veterans don't, I want to say, get the credit they, they they're due because a lot of our wars are being overlooked or not really pressed upon the depth of some of the battles that some of these men have had to sacrifice for keep us through. So um, I encourage you, if you do have little ones, to, to find any type of historical landmark and make sure they do know the history, whether it's Gettysburg or, or a number of ones that you can go through and a lot, a lot of small mom and pop towns that have a lot of history to them. So um, we are going to move into our prayer concerns. Oh. All right, one more praise. I, have, right. I praise God that we have a president that actually acknowledges that we need more prayer. <clears throat> Absolutely. And uh, it was nice to hear him say what Pastor has been saying. It's uh, church is essential just as much as what the abortion So um, to have a president be willing to say that. Margo? Um, just speaking of that, that if you had an opportunity to see the Somerset magazine, there's a gentleman in there that um, is one of the seven survivors of the Battle of the Bulge. Um, he does reside in my facility, but it's a really awesome individual. Um, and I also have a World War II guy that goes to English, um, who actually saw the flag in Nima Jima. Um, and the history that is there is, when you talk to them, is so awesome. So I praise God that I have the pleasure and the honor to serve them. Absolutely. I want to say sacrifice, that's amazing. Any others this morning? I don't want to glance over anybody here. If not, we're going to go to fair concerns. Uh, we do want to continue to remember Kate Bonnke with her health issues she dealing with. Uh, also, keep uh, Don Sackler in prayer with his shoulder. Um, keep uh, Harry and his family in prayer still as they're getting everything back in order after their fire. So keep them in prayer. Um, everybody that's dealing with unemployment at this time, or maybe at lost hours, uh, there are uncertainties there. Keep them in prayer. Uh, keep Pauline in prayer uh, with, with her heart. Uh, so definitely want to not forget her. Jerry Phillippe as well with his breathing issues. Uh, keep him in prayer. Um, let's see here. Our, everybody's dealing with COVID right now and different situations, especially our first responders. Keep them in prayer. Our military, especially this weekend. The missionaries as well. And as we were just talking about, our leaders of the country, those that are making the decisions. Um, for where our nation is going to be formed. And also be mindful of all our cancer patients um, that are dealing with illnesses and different points in their rehab and treatments. Naomi Schrock, Paul Mitchell, um, Uncle Dave Postetler, Don Sackler Jr., and also Beth Miller. Are there any others this morning or updates or new additions to our prayer list that we need this morning? Margaret? Uh, that's any others? If there's a lot of spoken requests this morning, if there is no other additions or updates, I'll ask you to please stand and sing our prayer again, number 228. Why should you love me so? Please, I'm going to my salvation. 
sign for you on the eye of it where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike. This is the day you are to commemorate. For a generation will come. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, the last thing for you. The second one, <clears throat> taken from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Verse 24 says this, And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this when you are drink it in remembrance of me. Wherever you eat this bread and drink this cup, proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread and drinks the cup of the Lord is in an unworthy manner will be guilty. I'm sitting against the Lord. <coughs> and the blood and body of the Lord. So. Remember the days of old. He says in Deuteronomy 32. Consider the generation of long past. Ask your father, and he will tell you. The elders, they will explain to you about what has happened before. Sometimes remembering is hard. I think all of you have done that. You can't find your glasses, you can't find your key, you can't find them. They may be anyway. There's a story about three sisters. Three old sisters lived together. The first sister got up to go to bed. Halfway up the stairs, she stopped and asked, Was I going up or was I coming down? The second sister, who was sitting there, replied, with a hint of aggravation, You were going up to bed. The third sister headed for the kitchen to make herself a sandwich. Once in the kitchen, she hollered back to her second sister, who was sitting down stairs. What did I come in here for? The second sister said, this time, very annoying, you went in to make yourself a sandwich. The second sister said, I'm so glad I'm not so forgetful. Both of those, you are. And she knocked on the twig. And she got up. Went over to the door and said, Who is it? <laughs> <laughs> How we fall into that trap? We don't think we're, we, we have a problem remembering. I don't have a problem, right? You can't remember, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be like a person in the, in the store or in a commercial that said, You know, where's your keys? I, and it's in the refrigerator. You know, I've done that lots of times. I put my fault a couple years ago, a couple different places, <clears throat> came back, I can't find a lot. Where is it? I walked around, just look here, look there. Yeah, look over there. I said, why is it in the closet? Well, put my hat there first, and I, I walked with my hat. And that's where it was. Well, I looked all over that house. I threw the water. It's in the closet. You know, I, I, there's no way I would look at it. So, you think about that yourself. It's foolish, right? Why can't I remember these things? Well, if you go back, turn back, way back, we are talking about the first part in Exodus, about the individual people. Sometimes we look at our Memorial Day today. Today we celebrate Memorial Day. Sometimes, years and years ago, back in the 1800s, it was called Decoration Day. But then they changed it to Memorial Day in the late 1800s after the uh, Civil War. They set aside to remind us that we are free today because of the many that died for our freedom. We celebrate the sacrifice of others and also at times to remember the sacrifice of Christ on the cross that we might have eternal life in heaven. Has to be eternally free. So, first of all, we see we remembrance of the deliverance of Egypt. That first verse that we read in Exodus, that first one about the Passover. In the old text, it says, The stories must be told to the youth over and over again so that they will not forget what God did for us, getting the children of Israel out of Egypt. We think about that story itself, the celebration of the Passover. Remember, God. He commanded Pharaoh to release his people, and he would not do it. He had sent many plagues on Egypt. He still wouldn't do it. He hardened his heart. And then the tenth plague, the last one, to strike down every firstborn of men and animals in Egypt. He also God brought judgment on every Egyptian god at that time also. So the children of Israel and the animals and all people and the children of Israel at that time, they would be saved. If they put the blood of the lamb on the top, on the side of the doorframe. The death angel passed over. The Lord passed over that night 
And those who, when he saw the blood, he did pass over. That's where it all comes from. The song is saying the same thing about, I will pass over for you. All that stuff comes back to the same thing about pass over. The next morning, the children of Israel, the Egyptians were so glad to get rid of them, they said, get out of here. We'll give you gold, silver, anything. Just leave this place. We're causing nothing but problems. So they did that. They were not there very long, and the Egyptians let them go. 400 years of slavery. Finally, they were free. God told them. He defeated the enemies all around them. He said, I want you to remember how I delivered you from this place. I passed over when I saw the blood. From generation to generation, I want you to tell your children to remember this day. And today they have a feast of the Passover to this day. Why? Because the important thing for them to remember. Sometimes we look at God to remember his guidance and protection of the children of Israel. In Deuteronomy 8:12, it says, And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord God helped you through 40 years in the wilderness to humble you, to prove to you that I am God, and to keep my commandments. He said that to the individual people. Why were there 40 years? Because they were disobedient. The 12 spies went into the new camp, land of Canaan. Ten came back and said, Oh, we can't go. They're dying from the land. Two came with Joshua and made back and said, yeah, Let's go. The God's going to be with us the whole time. He was with us through the Red Sea. Here we are. And we can't go to this land. Yet they would not go. So they paid the penalty. They went, well, in, in that wilderness for 40 years, it was a time of testing for them to prove who was God. Provided, he provided everything for them. He provided manna for that time. He provided the water for them. Their sandals never wore up. The whole time. He provided them. That way they must remember these things that God did this for them. That's an important thing for that. Also, God's provision for the people themselves. Even today, the Jewish people have been they're having persecuted, uh, had fought wars. And look at it. They're still there. They're still there. God has been providing them the whole time. He did it to their children. Yes, they're paying the penalty for not believing in the Messiah. And they won't pay a penalty come down the road later on. But still, providing for them now. If they fought many wars, they were outnumbered. 1967 war, they were supposed to be defeated soundly. It's over. Six days, it was over. Finished. They won. So we see people should remember how God provides for us each day. Do you remember that? Every morning you get up, what do you say? Think about what God has given you today. Is it the importance? You made it through the night. You're not dead. And hopefully you're ready to go. If you died that night, did your soul be in heaven? I hope so. But if you're next day, what do you do? What do you say? How God provided for us each day? Yes, I hope you do. Thirdly, remember the sacrifices for others, of others. Remember the sacrifices that uh, have been taken before you. We should remember there are parents' sacrifices. He says in, in the scriptures, to honor your father and mother. It says Proverbs 6 20. My son, keep the father's commandments and forsake not the law of thy mother. The word of both the father and mother should have equal weight on us. Remember the sacrifice they have made for you as they are growing up, the things they have done for you. For the children to do that, children of Israel, for the sacrifice that God had made, he was a cloud uh, by, by day, fire by night. Remember all that. And he has But father and mother, pass it on to your children. Remember what you said, what God has done for you. Today, you see, and I just heard Michael Yusuf on television this morning say, this generation, we are responsible for what's happening today. Because our children, we were so busy, Making money and doing all kinds of things, our children are falling away from God. We are one generation probably from nowhere. Think about that. Think about all those who don't read the Bible. Don't have, they don't go to church. They don't go to Sunday school. They don't go to the Christian sports. They don't read Christian books. They have nothing. And they're going to guide our country? They're going to lead us? The next generation? Think about that. I work. I, I, I'm concerned. I see who the elevated the power. Our children have not remembering what we said to them. Maybe you didn't say anything to them. Say once. You didn't do that. Because this is the thing that they're saying. Children of Israel, tell your, tell your children when they're walking, when they're up, when they're down, tell them all the time about what you have done. 
Remember the sacrifice of those for our freedom. Remember the revolutionary war, as Lloyd alluded to. A war that we were out gun, out man, out everything. Who won? God. We weren't supposed to even be there. We had a ragtag army that was no, had no shoes, had, had, had any guns, must have done. Yet they what they beat the, the almost most powerful country in the world for our freedom. Those who have fought and died in all the conflicts of war, civil war, the civil war, World War I, World War II. I lost an uncle in World War II. He shot down over France someplace in the B-49, B-47. I don't know much, but I never talked to my mom. I never, I never, I never, I no, I said, no, he, he was shot down and killed. Some of you had people. And I remember Frank Miller talking to him. Not Frank back there, but the Frank, the other Frank Miller. He was in Battle of the Ball. Next to see him talking about that. He talked to me about what happened. It's freezing squad. He went frozen to feet. And box, box, box holes and they're bombed and they're killed right beside them. Just imagine that. And think about what we've done today. Forget about that stuff. Forget about all this thing. Think about the men, the women, the Gulf Wars, Korea, Vietnam. I mean, all these people have nightmares, like Roy said. People still have nightmares in the Gulf War. They've lost limbs, they've lost arms, legs, they're, they're wounded warriors. Those who have died in peacetime, not just war time, but peacetime. Serving us all of them. And we need to forget about that. Remember the sacrifices of those today and in our military. Those who are serving now, uh, sacrificing their time, their families, for our country, protection of our country. Our American soldiers, our personnel have made us proud to be Americans. We should thank them on any occasion to do so. When you see them, thank them for their service. People have sent messages to support to the, to the, to the uh, people in the service, better women. And they think they appreciate you for it. I'm sure they do. Think about all those things that have done. Remember that. Do not forget where we come from, where we came from. Because like the boy said, well, I said, you could do what we're trying. They're going to start the, uh, after the Civil War. They're going to start like World War I or II. Forgetting about the Revolutionary War. Our founding. They're going to forget about that. Not important. Right? No. So you might have to do your history for yourself. You might have to teach your, as your grandfather, grandfather, grandmother, you might have to teach people to do that. I hope not. Because we know where we've come from. We know all the things that are necessary. We know what we've done. And thirdly, and finally, but the most important one, the, the thing to remember is a meal of remembrance. It was in the upper room the night before Christ's crucifixion. He met with the disciples to celebrate Passover. Jesus gave them a greater, a greater thing to remember. He said this, Remember my broken body. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the same time he took the cup, saying, This is my the new covenant in my blood. So do this in remembrance of me. No longer for these ingredients, just talking about the Passover. These ingredients we're talking about the bread and cup, the eternal remember of Jesus Christ and his sacrifice on the cross by his love for all of us. Jesus said, do this, remember. Many tables, I think, honestly, I think had, had a way outside of it. Do this, remember of me. Right there, right there it is. Why? Because we want to remember this to Christ come back again to remember his sacrifice on the cross. For Without that sacrifice on the cross, we would be lost in our sins forever and ever. Think about it. We put God came down from heaven in the form of Jesus Christ, who knows no time, no boundary, who put in this boundary. For 33 years, we put God on the earth for you and me for what? To bring us back to him, Jesus Christ. To bring him back so, so we're in, re in reconciliation with our Father. God came back to us. It says Emmanuel. What did it say? Not Emmanuel. God with us. Can you imagine? The creator of the universe who created billions of stars on the cross. Think about that this morning. As we begin our service of preparation of communion, think about what we are doing this morning. Right? Remember Jesus Christ for what he's done for us. Remember the memorial, all those things. Sometimes we forget about that. Just to make a service. This is not just a service. It's something you need to know. Remember. All of us. <clears throat> this is what we're going to do as we begin. Children are coming back upstairs for a minute for us. <laughs> I want you to think about that. 
Cleanse your heart. Think about that worship. Cleanse your heart. All the things that are here. Just cleanse it out. I think of anything else that what we're going to do for service. Don't think about what you're going to do today, what you're going to do tomorrow, next week. Just think all that out. And our communion is no communion. You're just as long as you're here, you're Christ and your Savior, Lord, you can take that with us. Not a problem. And we think about these things this morning, but also knowing that God, through Christ Jesus on the cross of Calvary, a loving sacrifice, he says in the scripture, he did it for his friends, for us. He could have walked, he could have come. The man, people that he couldn't get off the cross, he could have prayed. He's gone. He could have walked off himself and blinded everybody else and did anything he wanted to do. He didn't do that. The scripture says we must have the perfect lamb on the cross of Calvary, spreading the blood of Christ on that cross. So we think about that this morning as we do and begin our service. But I want you to remember what we're thinking about. Members of, of what is very important, I think, today, not only just Christian members, but also our members of those that have gone before us. So I link them up, we're going to start our service.